Recreation Entertainment Network presents a live, interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And we welcome you live to the ON TV studio here in Lake Orion, Michigan. You are watching The Fatal 4-Way along with Sean Grugel, Hollywood Q, somewhat with Brian Balf. I'm Jason Klaus. We appreciate you tuning in here this week. We have a lot to talk about here. We are going to talk about the Money in the Bank pay-per-view that's coming up here next weekend. We are going to talk about rumor and innuendo that could... It could change the entire landscape of this business if it is accurate. We're going to talk about the Mount Rushmore of the greatest wrestling video games of all time. All that and more. But before we do, gentlemen, we got to talk about the thing that has dominated the, the headlines here in the last week or so. And that is what I considered the biggest arrival or debut of a faction of a group in quite some time. Of course, I'm talking about the arrival of the Wyatt Six. It finally happened here, um, uh, you know, all, about almost two weeks ago, but the wrestling world is still buzzing over what we saw on Monday Night Raw all the weeks, the months, the, the vignettes, the QR codes, everything leading up to, and there was a lot of anticipation. We talked about this on the hot tag. We had to, they had to nail it right out of the gate because if they didn't, it was dead in the water right immediately. There was no chance. Q, I'll ask you first because I have not, we have not, you and I have not had a chance to talk about this. Where was the debut of Wyatt Six in the grand scheme of things in terms of the greatest arrivals in WWE history? Oh, wow. As far as history, I really got to go back and really uh, see. But I know this year, that was one of the biggest ones, you know, that and then Jacob. Uh, but the Wyatt, I thought I felt a glitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Wyatt Six, I'm telling you, um, it, it, it goes all the way back to the <coughs> documentary. I don't know if anybody's seen the end of the documentary with the, uh, with the tease that they uh, did at the end with Bo, uh, Uncle Howdy, you yeah. know, and the lantern and everything. But, and then all the QR codes, I think it was well done. I thought for a moment it started to drag a little bit with all the hints and the QR codes and all the flashing images on the screen. But man, when they pulled the trigger, I think it was well done. And I was telling uh, Mr. Balf over here. Uh, He's a good listener. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> one thing that I love is the fact that they did it with this new production team. Yeah. And uh, it was that continuous camera shot, you know, that just one shot from uh, Sister Abigail going all the way through each and every uh, gorilla position, all the way to the backstage area with all the fog and the sparks and, uh, you know, seeing all the different characters, just kind of like just, just posing and seeing all the people that were, you know, dead, you know. For real. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> it looked like a, a real-life horror flick they, that yes. happened to be captured on Monday Night Raw. And that's something that you and I talked about. You mentioned the one, the one camera shot, dude. They could not have planned that any better, and it did. With the new production team, it had a different feel than the original Wyatt family because you and I talked about this on on the Hot Tag podcast. They cannot have too many parallels with the original Wyatt family. Right. They have to establish their their own identity. Did they do that out of the gate with this? Oh, I 100% believe they did. I mean, and you, you mentioned the documentary. It can go back even further than that. I mean, look at the far-off look that Dexter Loomis would have. The gradual change in Joe Gacy on NXT starting to go crazy. Uh, Nikki Cross just Stand. staring into space, you know. And the fact that they stole your hairstyle, Q, that doesn't make me too happy, you know? Yeah, well, but, you know. It's <laughs> on the, TV now. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, uh, they did that interview where Uncle Howdy was interviewing not Bo Dallas, but, you know, Taylor Rotundo. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you watch that, man, that 
I mean, those were genuine words that were coming out of Taylor. I mean, it was it was so creepy, the dynamic of Captain, or I keep calling him Captain Howdy. <laughs> Uncle Howdy. Okay, Uncle pull Howdy. back the curtain on this. The Captain Howdy thing, and you pull back the curtain, that goes back to the original Exorcist. You know, that's what the Regan was calling the devil. The devil, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Uncle Howdy. He's uncle now. Yeah, he's an uncle now. <laughs> um, you know, but that dynamic between Taylor and... The, when it first started, I heard the creepy voice coming out of Howdy. I was like, oh, no, this is going to be so cheesy. <laughs> and, then, and then Rotunda spoke, and it was like, oh, th- this is this is good. It, uh, it, it's one of those, it's a more psychological presentation. Yes, it is impressive visually because it's so out of the box. You look at Eric Rowan specifically with the with the creepy rabbit mask and and all that. Um, King of the Wicker People is what I called him originally because I was like, because with the way it was all lit and stuff, that's the other part, the lighting of it um, from all the backstage presentations. But I said from the start, because I've always been a huge Bray Wyatt fan, if this is going to be a success, they have one shot to nail this out of the park. I feel like they did initially. Now the follow-up, how were they going to follow that up? Well, they did it with the, with that promo with Uncle Howdy interviewing Bo Dallas. So now Huge. where do we go from here, Q? I mean, you look at that presentation, and specifically Dexter Loomis, Eric Rowan, and Joe Gacy. What are they going to look like when they step into the ring? Are they wrestling in that stuff? I mean, that's the <laughs> other thing that, you know, what is what is the in-ring presentation going to look like? Or is this going to be a special attraction that only happens every once in a while? I think this is going to be handled a lot differently than the uh, the the, what, the the original uh, The Fiend and, you know, all the other characters of Bray Wyatt and, and we already heard, hear the uh, reports about them saying that it's not going to be the uh, supernatural elements into this thing. So uh, I believe, like, we kind of got a tease Monday, you know, with the uh, interview with Taylor Rotunda. Uh, we seen Taylor Rotunda. That's, the, to me, that was a big key right there. Now we, uh, we kind of understand why he's doing this because he's leading into that whole split personality thing kind of like what Bray was doing originally when he first came back Mm -hmm. but uh now I want to see what are they going to do with these other characters like where does Dexter Loomis fit in where does Joe Gacy fit in are they going to do like another interview segment you know with the rest of the the group you know so I believe they do something like that we get to see them you know, so if we get to see their faces without the mask, there's no need for them to even be in the ring with the mask. It's going to be interesting to see how this does play out here in the, in the coming weeks with the Wyatt Six. You know, there's a number of different ways you, you could go about this storyline-wise, and it seems like they're, they have the right people in place here. So we're going to have to see how this unfolds, especially leading it probably SummerSlam, I would imagine they're going to have a real prominent piece of business on that particular card because Money in the Bank is next weekend. And uh, we're actually going to make that transition right now because as far as the big shows are concerned, all roads are leading to Toronto, Canada next Saturday for the Money in the Bank premium live event, which you can see exclusively on the WWE Network and Peacock. Uh, right now, there's still some some slots that have to be filled, gentlemen. Um, let's look at the men's Money in the Bank ladder match first. Right now, we have Uso, Hayes, Andrade, and Gable with two open slots that need to be filled. Pr- presumably, uh, Friday or you know he'll, later tonight on SmackDown and potentially Monday night on Raw. Um, Q, I'm going to put you on the spot first. There's two open spots. Who do they go to if you have the book? Well, I think Drew's getting in there. Mm-hmm. Drew is definitely getting in there. Uh, as far as that last slot, I know they got the matches set up. I don't know off the top of my head 
Oh, let's run down the card real quick. We'll we'll do that. Uh, obviously, the men and w women's Money in the Bank matches. We also have Damian Priest will will defend the World Heavyweight Championship against Seth Rollins. We have the six man tag with Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens against the Bloodline, and Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental Championship is what has been f formally announced at this point, at this hour. But we're still a week away from from the pay per view, so it, more matches could be added. We don't know. Like we said, with with the men's match, there's two open slots. With the women's match, there's three at this point. Um, Drew McIntyre, I feel like is obviously one. I don't know why L.A. Knight is not being f factored into this thing uh, at, at, at this point. Sean, what what about yeah, you? Yeah, the qualifying you, match. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I'm just listening to you two. Um, <laughs> L.A. Knight and Drew McIntyre are going to fill those two slots. There's, you have to do something with L.A. Knight. We've been mm -hmm. talking about it for weeks now, and he's <coughs> steadily on the decline, and they don't put some you know hustle behind that muscle that we're just going to wind up eventually losing L.A. Knight. I know who it's not going to be. It's not going to be Dijak. Oh, so <laughs> for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll make much of that li later on in in the show. I want to add a little bit to that. Uh, I'm a little nervous about that uh, triple threat match with uh, LA Knight because I believe I, I, I got this weird feeling in my gut that it's going to go to Santos. Really? Yeah. Why do you say that? Now I say that because I see what they're doing with these underdog picks. If you notice, there's been a lot of underdog picks and they will, what, they're, what they're doing is they're, they, they got the underdog pick and the other two guys are feuding with each other. Mm -hmm. I noticed that with a few of the matches that they've been doing, and it's always been the underdog that wins. So I believe Logan and L.A. are going to cancel each other out, which is going to leave them off of the show. That, and it's going to really put their match, because we talked about this back in April when mm -hmm. we were looking at, at, at WrestleMania, when, you're, when we were looking from Mania to, uh, to SummerSlam, because they're in that big f football stadium. Yeah. You need marquee matches. On paper, Logan Paul and LA Knight are our match made in heaven. You yeah. know, and you put the United States t title as the backdrop of this. I am okay with the fact if they keep these guys off the Money in the Bank card, if they are going to put that, that steam for their match at SummerSlam. Sean, is that how you see this thing playing out, or are they really just... They're dropping the ball on this whole thing, and we really need to do, uh, send in our letters of recommendation for us to take over the writing. <laughs> I, you know, I'll do I, that anyway. <laughs> I, I, I think Q's pretty spot on, actually. You know, now that I, I've heard, actually heard it, I can see it. Um, because we really do have, you know, I could see a quick roll up on LA Night or something like that. Yeah. Um, it, has, it has to happen by SummerSlam. And, here, here's another one for you. I've been preaching about L.A. Knight has to get some something behind him. Logan Paul's on the decline now. I mean, he he really isn't making waves now. If they don't do something with him, he he's just going to disappear as well. Uh, he used to be special. Yeah, he used to be. Now now we're seeing vignettes where L.A. Knight's swimming in his pool. Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Well, what doesn't make sense, t t you know, to me personally, is who is the Intercontinental Championship match that they have booked for <laughs> for this show. Uh, Braun Breaker is going to challenge Sami Zayn <laughs> for for the Intercontinental Championship. I when I realized this match was made official, I was really going back in time over the course of history, going way back to the early pay-per-view years and look at the different matches for the Intercontinental Championship, the David versus Goliath thing and what worked, what didn't. Um, I told Sean on the podcast, if this thing goes beyond five minutes, something is terribly wrong here in terms of booking because the way they have Braun Breaker p position. This dude is a runaway locomotive at this point. And that momentum, it took him a minute when, once he became part of the SmackDown r roster. But it seems like he's finding his footing. 
he's got the machine behind him and now he's on track theoretically what could be his first t singles title is this the start of him becoming the next main event star for WWE Ugh. you don't think it's too early for him to get the Intercontinental title no I'm asking you is this the st is this the, the first step I like I said I look at this the last time I saw a match on paper like this, and even though it wasn't pre-booked, but on when it finally happened, is Ultimate Warrior and Honky Tonk Man. You've got the big <laughs> jacked up runaway crazy guy oh, yeah. against the more reserved ring ring technician, which Honky Tonk Man was. Sami Zayn is. Um, that's what I'm saying. If this match goes beyond five minutes, I know I know it's 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 wrong. Because Brown Breaker should be blowing through this guy, in my opinion. I, I think so too. But at that same time, there has to be some kind, in my opinion, some kind of controversy in this match. Because Brown Breaker, while people are booing him, I don't think he has a he has that established killer heel mentality yet. I, I mean, I like where he's going. I just don't think he's there yet. Um, so there has to be some kind of Maybe he peels off the top turnbuckle. Sammy goes for the haluva kick, misses, crotches himself. Braun Breaker with the spear. It has to be some kind of controversial pin. It has to be. Where are you at on this? Yeah, I, I agree with you. He's not that type of heel. He's kind of like that Brock Lesnar type heel where he just will be, beat you up. You know, he don't care how you do it. He just beat you up. He's bigger and stronger. But the one thing I see here at Money in the Bank is that Sheamus and Kaiser is still a part of this feud. Mm -hmm. They are still a part of this feud. And I, I was actually thinking we were going to see a four-way. But uh, I don't see a clean victory for either one of these guys. So it's kind of hard to say what I, this This one is like a toss-up for me. Yeah, I... You, you guys may make a good point, and I can see that. I, I just look at it from on paper. You know, I try to put some degree of realism into it because in, in real life, there is no way Sami Zayn is going to put <laughs> up a fight with true. Brown Breaker, right? <laughs> um, real quick, with the women's money in the bank ladder match, right now we have EO Sky, Chelsea Green, Lyra Valk Valkyria, uh, three open spots. Obviously, Tiffany Stratton has to be factored in here. Who's yeah. who's the, the other two, Sean? I think we're going to see a surprise because rumors are Lacey Evans is looking to lace up the boots again. That so. would make me so happy. I swear to God, if that was the case. <laughs> she, I was always a big fan of, of Lacey Evans. And then I'd almost like to see one of the NXT girls get called up for this match. And you know who that is. I want to see Sol Ruka. And a money in a bank mm. match. C could you imagine her hitting her finisher off the ladder? She just did that, didn't she? <laughs> like but the, uh, on, on a bigger stage, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, on a bigger stage. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Um <clears throat> all right, the six man tag team match, WWE uh, world champion uh, Cody Rhodes will be teaming up with Randy Orton and Kevin Owens against the bloodline. We saw the debut of Jacob Fatu finally. What Sin a horrible nickname, by the way. The Samoan one. Uh, Samoan werewolf. Were werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> horrible. Right. Um, at least, at least Vince didn't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Six-man tag match, and you know, we kind of saw this was going to be what they were leading to, and I look at this as kind of one of the preliminary steps that's going to lead to the war games civil war within the bloodline this is a big test for the mm -hmm. three members of the bloodline with solo kind of in the roman reigns role at this point um where where do you see see this going i'm just happy to see jacob there i'm hoping that he's one of the three mm -hmm. you know in this match and uh it's Whew, man, I believe I believe the Samoans might have, or the Tongan Samoans, you know, they, they might have to get this win, but uh, probably on Kevin Owens. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Kevin, man. Poor. <laughs> For real. <laughs> got to take the pin, yeah. man. <laughs> you got to take the pin, Kevin. But and he's hurt. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. If Kevin Owens is your weak link, 
what's that say for the rest of the team? It's a formidable team. You know, you obviously Rose is the golden child, and then you got Orton, who's royalty. Yep. So, you know, uh, is this going to be a big victory for the, for the bloodline, or is this going to be a match that winds up being inconsequential in the grand scheme? Well, it has to be a big win for the bloodline. Yeah, if Jacob's in it, I think Jacob takes the pin. But I want to pose this question to Q because I posed it, I believe I posed it to you on the hot tag. I posed it to Q. Did you catch when Solo sat down in the corner and he was begging off and he had the big smile come across his face? Jacob hit the ring. Comes out, no sells Kevin Owens super kick. <laughs> But then he sells Co Cody's punches, which I didn't get. But, hey, whatever. <laughs> Far be it for me to write the script, right? But when Solo hugged Jacob, Jacob didn't hug Solo back. I noticed that. Did you also notice the hair? Jacob also has wild hair normally, but it was in braids and dyed red like the Usos. So I don't – am I reading too far into it? Or does Roman Reigns maybe send in – the Samoan werewolf to infiltrate the new bloodline. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I was looking at a graphic earlier today, and it had Jacob on the Usos side, and that's the way I see it. I see pretty much the Samoans against the Tongans and Solo. That's, that's, that's the way I see the Civil War. The Rock leading the Tongans, Roman leading the OG bloodline minus solo. I could see that playing out too. It makes all the sense in the world. You know, if we're going to apply logic to it, then absolutely <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be the way to go. Hey, here. you know, H is watching. He's picking oh, up yeah. on our ideas. Um, absolutely. As we talk about, you know, as we, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And if you have an opinion about Money in the Bank, a prediction, or the Wyatt. A six, their debut. We invite you to join the conversation. The number is at the bottom of the screen. Lines are wide open. Um, join us in the chat as well. Absolutely. And um, real quick, we want to make mention and send our, our condolences to the Samoan family. Um, this week they lost a very prominent member of the family, WWE Hall of Famer, former World Tag Team Champion, S Sika. Uh, the father of the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. So we wanted to send our, our condolences to the, the family for sure. Um, the, now, they also have Damian Priest and Seth Rollins for the world championship. We're actually going to table that for the, um, the follow-up because you can find where I'm trying to keep everything. We have a lot to talk about here this week, and we could spend another 45 minutes on this match and all the ramifications that could be. Um, but I want to fo focus on another headline that came across my radar this week, and I want I want your, your guys' opinion on this because if rumor and innuendo winds up being anything close to reality, something significant could change the landscape of professional wrestling as a whole. For whatever reason, there is a lot of buzz around the possibility of Shane McMahon kind of forming some sort of working agreement with All Elite Wrestling. Q, if a McMahon was to work for AEW, what would that do to the landscape of the business? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, the McMahon name is not even the same as it was before. You know I mean, it's, it's been a lot of controversy behind the McMahon name. It's been a lot of issues with it. You know, last time we seen, seen Shane, he was laid out in the ring with a torn quad. I mean, he's, I don't think too many people are excited, would, would be excited to see Shane McMahon in AEW, there's not going to be much of a change. You're going to get a spike. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to definitely get that spike out of curiosity. Sure. So, and it's going to just dwindle down just like Mercedes. As soon, that's, good, that's a very good point. As soon as I saw this headline, the first thing I thought of was the reenactment of the final Monday Nitro where mm -hmm. Shane McMahon shows up and <laughs> buys WCW from under Vince's nose and all That'd this cool. other stuff. 
is do you feel like if this was a reality, they would try to reenact that? Because we all know Tony Khan's um, box of creativity is about as wide as this pad of paper right here, if I'm being honest. Well, let's face it. Uh, Tony Khan has more money than God. <laughs> and we don't have to worry about Shane buying AEW, but what I think you will see is the reenactment of Vince McMahon bringing Eric Bischoff out as the general manager. Mm. And I think we could see Shane McMahon in a general manager role, because what else is he going to do? Go out there and do his little dance and, you know, money, money, dollar, dollar, or whatever. Right. <clears throat> Weak punches. No. no. <laughs> But he he can talk on the mic. Weak but stiff. <laughs> uh, he, he's got to be a better general manager than what Christopher Daniels is. And I, I, I think, like Q said, you'll get a spike in the ratings for the first, you know, two, three weeks. And then it's, it's just going to die right off. I hope it's not true. I'll, I'll be straight up. I, I really hope it's not true. Just... The whole dynamic makes my brain hurt. I, well, I, don't I, you think, though, it's kind of like the McMahon's giving a finger to WWE? That's exactly how I see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And it's somebody, and self-admittedly, as somebody who has been a lifelong fan of WWE and all its incarnations, I low-key take that personally. Yeah. I, I spent a ton of money <laughs> to make the McMahon's, you know, billionaires. Where is that brand loyalty at? Well, as we all know, and then in sports and, and entertainment, that's no longer a thing Not anymore. There. It's Not all there. about the dollar, and I understand that. But you know what? And it also makes me think of, uh, to a lesser extent, it, it reminds me of when, Ho when uh, Hogan went to TNA. And yeah. uh, people yeah. got excited for a while, but then, you know, it did nothing. Did nothing. Right. Um, real quick before we take um, our our break here, one more piece of business that came across the radar that is going to affect uh, the future, specifically for for WWE, are these proposed uh, changes that are coming to both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Now it has been well documented that Raw will be going to Netflix beginning in January. However, what was not really fully disclosed was how would that change the content on that show? Well, it appears that with the move to Netflix, there is going to be a concentrated effort that the content is going to be much more Attitude Era-esque uh, for the Monday Night Show. And that's something that a huge portion of the wrestling fans have been clamoring for, more edgier content, more more of what we saw in the late 90s, right? So there's that. And then SmackDown, with it moving from Fox over to the USA Network, it, it, all indications are, uh, oh, the Raw would go back to two hours, too, by, by the way, in this pr proposed deal. Uh, a two-hour Monday Night Raw. However, with SmackDown moving to the USA Network, SmackDown would become a three-hour show. Q, what's your thoughts on these changes if they are actually what comes to fruition? I'm okay with change. I mean, this is actually a pretty uh, interesting change. I'm very uh, interested in see how this Netflix thing is going to really pan out. I'm excited for it, uh, to see some edgy, some edgy stuff. You know, I'm all cool with it. It's 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 really not only just adding, you know, a couple of swear words or, you know, hopefully ain't nobody doing that <laughs> stuff, I mean. But to really keep those stories going and make it kind of like adult-focused stories, like real stuff, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're not watching Sesame Street here. Right. I mean, we're watching grown men get in there and fight, you know, and women and everything. So that, that, we want to see some grown-up storylines and just keep it interesting. Seems like they're kind of laying the line in the sand. Monday Night Raw is going to be geared towards the adults, and SmackDown is going to be geared more towards the the younger demo. Got to keep the toy revenue going, yep. you know what I'm saying? So, so that keeps Cody on SmackDown. <laughs> right. But it, with them making a blatant change to a more edgier content, Roy pushing the TV 14 rating versus a, a TV PG, 
uh, for SmackDown, which I would assume that's what would maintain if they were going to be moving to the USA Network. Are they going to make too big of a division between the two shows, the two rosters, where the inter-promotional thing would no longer be as prominent as it is now? I think that's it 100%. I mean, it would almost like be taking Stone Cold Steve Austin and putting him on an episode of Teletubbies. Mm -hmm. It's just not feasible, you know. Um, <laughs> Stunners. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stunner to Tinky Winky. <laughs> Uh, a stuttered uh, toilet seat head. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I, I just don't think that you you can't. I mean, I think you can elevate the stars from SmackDown and bring them up to Raw, but you're not going to be able to take those stars from Raw and put them back on the. You can't give someone an edge and then dull it right down right. because you're going right. to kill their character. Right. That that's my that was my biggest thought is if it's too much of a division too established of, of a split between the brands, that's going to be the downfall for so many guys trying to make yeah. that transition from w Raw to SmackDown. And you kind of see that with uh, every time Stone Cold comes back just to visit the PG era, yeah. you know, they can't tame him. <laughs> the Rock comes the Rock. back and he's dropping F-bombs all over the place. I mean, you can't tame these guys because that's the way they came up. Yeah, for sure going to be in, very in, in, interesting to, to see how this all unfolds as there's still a lot of changes happening with with television rights the uh, the NXT brand is going to be debuting on the CW I mean there's AEW is still trying to land their their future plans their their deal so a lot of things a lot of moving and shaking going on but what we're going to do right now is we are going to run a quick timeout when we come back we're going to talk about the Mount Rushmore of the video games for the wrestling genre. We have a pretty big announcement that we're looking forward to making, all that and more. And you can call in to the show at 810-331-2829. Lines are open. We'll be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way right after this. <laughs> That's right, the 21st annual Big Rig Gig is coming to Orion Township Friday, August 2nd from 5 to 9. Save the date for an evening full of trucks, tractors, bulldozers, construction equipment, police cars, fire trucks, and more. Grab your cameras to capture a night to remember with the people you'll never forget. From seeing vehicles of all shapes and sizes used around town to the experience of climbing on and through the many machines, honking the horn, and meeting different staff members who work the vehicles daily, this event is a wide load of laughs, all for free. Located at Friendship Park on the corner of Clarkston and Baldwin Roads in Orion Township, be there and join other families to make a strong and healthy community to share the excitement today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. And we welcome you back to the Fatal 4-Way live here on ONTV along with Sean Grugel, Claude L. Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus, and we are being joined in spirit here by the Stan Lee in of spirit. the PFC. In paper. In paper, in paper <laughs> form, Brian Ball. Ah, hope we hope cut. to hear from him uh, <laughs> momentarily. He is scheduled to call into the show. He was he's he's doing family things here as we come into the holiday week for the Fourth of July. So uh, 
uh, before before I forget, we hope that you guys, everybody, has a safe and happy Fourth of July ho holiday this week. Uh, Sean, let's turn this over to you, my friend. Uh, we have, we have some things to discuss in terms of your particular s segment, so I will turn it <laughs> over to, to you, sir. I am super excited this week to make this announcement. I put out a PSA to all the wrestling promoters in Michigan and to independent wrestlers. And guess how many responses we got, Q? Oh, man. Yeah. Absolutely zero. Donut. Zero. So, as of today, the Indy Roundup is officially dead. It's gone. It is pulled. We are no longer doing it. So I'm, I'm sorry to those who were contributing to us, but fact of the matter is, is if you don't want to promote yourselves, then I don't want to promote you. I'm sorry. It, it's, it's a slippery slope, but to Mal Malcolm and Zach and to Bubba and to John, thank you for contributing your shows. But in a couple weeks, uh, we will be debuting a new segment and this is going back. I, I want to give them as flowers to Sean Sisk, who was once a member of the On TV studio broadcast team. Without guys like him doing his podcast back over 20 years ago on an AM radio station, Damn. and the TV shows here with Tim Williams, I believe it was called The Jobber Hour, uh, we wouldn't be able to do shows like this. Sean created something on the internet called Shooting the Ropes. So, starting here in a couple weeks, I will be doing my own social commentary and I will be shooting the ropes myself and I will be shooting on wrestling. And for those of you who don't know what shooting means, it means we are about to go real. So it is going to get ugly. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fast. And I cannot wait to do this. Indy Roundup is dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about real, let's talk about... Um, another aspect that has been very real, and that's been your lack of fanfare for a particular member of the pro wrestling journalist team. <laughs> it has been well documented that uh, my astute tag team partner in this and many of our wrestling related endeavors here on the PFC Network has taken exception to one Dave LaGreca. I hate that guy. I know you do. So, as... I just heard Joe laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you are fixing to see is an exclusive here on the, the Fatal 4-Way. I have yet to see it myself, to, to be honest with you. However, one of our very loyal listeners who tune in every week to the Hot Tag Podcast actually is with us here in the studio, live with us here tonight, thought it would be a good idea to spend his hard-earned money <laughs> to send uh, a video request to one Dave LaGreca. So what follows is an exclusive here on the Fatal 4-Way as you are seeing it in a public realm for the first time ever. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage, as they say. I'm going to have to take off my mic here. Sean, what's going on, my brother? Uh, this is a cameo request from... Old toilet seat head. So uh, obviously you guys must be very close um, if it's from old, and not old OLD, but old OL toilet seat head. So uh, I'm sure you guys are very, very close. But Sean, keep grinding, man. Never stop the grind. You got your own podcast. Maybe one day I could be a guest on your podcast, but you keep doing it, man. Keep grinding, keep working hard. Big success is going to come your way. And it's an exciting time to be a wrestling fan. Truly, truly is. This is the best time. I think the best time in over the 40 years that I've been watching pro wrestling. So uh, it's a cool time. It's the perfect time to be doing a podcast. Tell old toilet seat head that I said hello. And hopefully one day we'll be talking on your show, man. Keep grinding, brothers. I'm celebrating you and celebrating your podcast today. So I'll take a listen and uh, we'll be talking soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. LaGreca. That's awesome. <laughs> Let me be the one. <laughs> <laughs> this.
This is a formal invitation, Mr. LaGreca. <laughs> we would love to, <laughs> we yeah. would love to have you on our show. We would love to have you discuss we? your views <laughs> of professional wrestling with us. My buddy here would love more than anything for an opportunity <laughs> to have a conversation with your fanfare for professional wrestling. Perhaps you guys could swap. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. My jaw hurts. From your fighting. face is a, is a very, very lovely shade of red. <laughs> You're sweating. I am. What's I, your problem? <laughs> first of all, Sally Jesse Raphael's <laughs> oh, voice Lord. got really deep. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Old toilet sea head Dave LaGreca says hi. Um, <laughs> Mr. LaGreca. <laughs> what What's funny? Let, uh, I'm speechless I know, right now. Let, let me try to put this into better context. <laughs> I, I'm trying to we wash have my gone, mouth. I, I understand. We are <laughs> we are on a more family oriented show. What this stems from is Sean and I have taken exception. We have actually gone on the airwaves and taken exception to some of the ways that that individual report. I'm trying to be professional <laughs> here. Uh, have taken exception to how he reports professional wrestling. Sean is not a fan by any stretch of the imagination and has been very vocal about that to the point to where Dave LaGreca blocked him on all forms of social media. So the fact that Toilet Seat Head, <laughs> who is sitting right behind this camera, um, went above and beyond and ordered for that cameo, and LaGreca has no idea, this, this, is the, this is the rib. He had no idea that the cameo he was making was for the dude he blocked. And that makes my heart happy. This is what, this is trend setting right here, Q. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I hope it was worth the money. We got to get him on the show now. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to make yeah. this happen. We're we going to make show. this happen. Whether it be either piped in here on Fatal 4-Way or on the Hot Tag Podcast, st stay tuned to pfcnetwork.net for all the latest oh, yeah. information on how we're going to make this happen. Make it happen. This is going to be my birthday gift to you for, for, your, for your big 5-0, pal. I'm getting Dave, Dave LaGreca on this show. Absolutely. For you. So, yeah. I'm already having heart palpitations. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am, oh. Uh, I, I, toilet Sea Head ran out of he here. He really did. He, <laughs> got, he ran he out of here. He stood up and bolted out of the studio faster than snot. But be that as it may, if you have an opinion on anything that we have talked about at this point, the number is at the bottom of your screen, 810-331-2829. Gentlemen, let's uh, move to the Mount Rushmore segment. Obviously, c conspicuous by his absence. He's right here. Is in physical form, I mean. <laughs> is the Stan Lee of PFC, one Brian Ball. We're hoping that uh, he is watching w with us live. Um, and he will, that, this is your cue, Brian, to call in, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, if Dave LaGreca can figure it out, Brian, you can. <laughs> so, uh, we, are, we are discussing the greatest video games, the Mount Rushmore of wrestling video games. Uh, you talk about video games, us, our demographic, our age group, we have spent a tremendous amount of time um, playing video games, whether it be from the Atari 2600 all the way up to the PlayStation 5s and the Xboxes and things of this nature. Brian had submitted his oh. in, and a lot of these were very s similar across the board. But real quick, Brian's s selection were No Mercy, WCW, NWO Re Revenge, the original pro wrestling game for the Nintendo, and of course the arcade classic that is WrestleFest. A uh, very admirable s selection. Q, let's talk about your selections. Ooh, man. Well, it looks like we all agree on the WWF No Mercy. That, to me, was a perfect game. I mean, it, it was just, the engine they used for that was just 
perfect. I had so much fun on that. Uh, WCW NWO Revenge was all, which also uses the same engine as the, the Just no the Mercy WCW game. characters. Yeah, 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 WCW characters. Actually, they did it first, so that mm -hmm. was an older game. Uh, then let's go back to 1994, I believe it is, where uh, it came out with Raw, WWF Raw for Super Nintendo. Man, I logged in a lot of hours as a kid. Sure, man, yeah, man. absolutely. You could be Luda Vachon in that game. I think that's yeah. the first female yep. wrestler yep. you could be. Yeah, yep. so. yep. absolutely. Yes. And then this was a different type of game, but it was WWF WrestleMania, the arcade version, where you can take The Undertaker and throw a fireball somewhere. It was a ghost, wasn't it? Oh, uh, a ghost, yeah. He was throwing yeah. ghosts and demons at you. And Doink had a big mallet yeah. that he come in with. Yep, yeah. he yeah. electrocute you with his handshake <laughs> and everything. Oh, man. I had a lot of fun playing those games, man. The WrestleMania arcade game I hadn't th thought about for a long time until I played it over at Sean's house because he's got one, one of those th things. Isn't that one of the games that you mm -hmm. have on it? Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, I remember having this I game. Loved it. I loved I really do. Love Sean, it. talk to us about your selections. WrestleMania 2000 is pretty much the same engine as No, no, no Mercy. Yeah. Um, WrestleFest, man, I, I, I probably could be as rich as Tony Khan right now on the amount of quarters I put into that game. <laughs> Pro Wrestling, I was a Starman and Fire Hayabusa guy. Mm-hmm. Star man was, was, <laughs> was the guy. And then, of course, the odd man out, as you can see, is Giant Graham 2000. Now, a lot of people don't know about that game because it was a Japanese exclusive. But if you know anything about ROMs and, you know, blah, 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 I, I own the game. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that game, you could be uh, Bruiser Brody. You could be Stan Hansen, Johnny Ace, Bruno Sammartino. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You could even be Hawk Warfield from uh, Virtua Fighter games. Wow. So, I mean, for me, that game was it because you can go real old school with it. Honorable mention goes to Fire Pro Wrestling because you could create your own guys. Mm. Mm. Yeah, three of my four all have the same engine. No Mercy, Revenge, WrestleMania 2000. Spent hours on those games. Loved every single second of it. And my, my fourth pick was SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain. Um, just Speaking a, a, of pain, old toilet seat head hasn't come back in here yet. No, there there he is. Oh. What, what, he's smiling about something, and that always makes me nervous oh. when he comes rolling in here. Yeah, check hey, hey, just come on up here. Come, come, come on, on up, up here, here, Jeff. This is live television. That's cool. What did you do? What have you done? I just ordered another cameo with David LaGreca, oh, inviting geez. him to either the hot tag or the fatal four away. Oh, wow. This is getting deep. Wow. <laughs> you must have some deep pockets, bro. This is getting deep. Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you relay that message just in case they didn't hear it on the mics. <laughs> Well, <laughs> old toilet sea head went, went ahead and ordered another cameo for Dave LaGreca to have him appear either here on the Fatal 4-Way or on the Hot Tag Podcast. <laughs> you know, I've been 100% showing up to this show. You've missed shows, Q's missed show. I mean, Brian's here in spirit. But I tell you what, Dave LaGreca shows, I'm going to show... <laughs> but I'll be in the parking lot waiting for Mr. LaGreca. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. That is, uh, <laughs> man, oh, man. This show has gone completely <laughs> sideways this week, so he why don't we out. just... <laughs> he went back out. It's dangerous when he goes out, apparently. <laughs> you, real quick, is there anything happening in the chat room? <laughs> yeah. Other than Otsky. <laughs> okay, whatever, let's... <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, let me scroll. Let me okay, scroll. yeah, let's let's scroll. Do some scrolling. Let's man. see what do we what do we got here in the chat. Uh, we have a comment from Eric Cherry who said, "Let SmackDown remain PG and Raw get its attitude back. That way, everyone wins. Hey, we all wins. We're all fans. <laughs> Except when you go from Raw to SmackDown. Your boy Swiss has been well documented. Yeah." And we have, okay, Eric Cherry, he also uh, sends, in, sends in his Mount Rushmore. Okay. And he says WrestleMania Challenge for NES. That game was junk. It was <laughs> junk. <laughs> I remember that game, too. Was that the one with the cage? Or was that? No, no that was Steel uh, Cage That Challenge. was the one where they had the generic guy that was you. 
Okay. And I think it had Macho Man, Million Dollar Man, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, yeah. Andre, maybe. Gotcha. Uh, he says, No Mercy. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone says No Mercy. He has SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain. Mm -hmm. And he has WrestleFest. Good selections, Mr. Cherry. Do appreciate you taking time out of your evening to, to give us a watch. There's still a few more minutes if you have something that you would like to add into the conversation. The lines are open. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will not bite your face off like I did Hoskies last week, I promise, as long as you don't make a, <laughs> some sort of reference to the spinner belt. Uh, but be that as it may, we have a very big announcement here. Uh, before you get to that. Yeah. We still have the world championship match. Priest against Pri oh, Seth Priest Rollins. And, and, and Seth Rollins. Thank you for reminding me. We do have some, some time. Um, this is a match that I feel like is going to... I want... I, I'm leery about this <laughs> because I last month I went on record and I said Drew McIntyre is, is a foregone conclusion. He is winning the World Heavyweight Championship from Damian Priest at Clash of the Castle. That did not happen. Rollins is back. He's in his first t title match for the first time since losing the title at WrestleMania 40. Still a lot of questions as to where he's at physically with having to rehab his knees and things of this nature. Do we see Damian Priest retain the championship here and go into S S SummerSlam as champion, or is Rollins returning to take back his throne? Okay, all right. This was a toss-up for me, only because of what's going to happen at SummerSlam. SummerSlam, Gunther has a date to win that title, and I'm putting my money on Gunther against anybody. Now, they also added that stip in this match where uh, if Priest lose, he has to leave the Judgment Day, or if uh, Rollins lose, he can't challenge for the title as long as Priest is still the champion. Uh, I kind of see that uh, if Rollins don't win, what does he do at SummerSlam? Good point. That's see, and, and 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 I can see if Priest don't win, you got Finn Balor right there. Yep. So that's where I'm kind of leaning towards where uh, Rollins might get a short title run. I could. Uh, he would be the trans. He would become the transitional champion until Gunther. Then is that what is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. Would you rather see Gunther take the title from Rollins versus? Damian Priest. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I want to see, cause I want to see a, I want to see a face and a heel. You know, I got, cause uh, we, we, even though you know Priest is, he's improved, he's improved, but I want to see Rollins mix it up with Gunther. He's mixed it well, you know, very well with Brock Lesnar, and uh, so I mean, having a, a a very good match with Gunther is not out of the question. As far as Priest and Rollins at Money in the Bank, where, where you at here, Sean? Man, after Priest showing with McIntyre, I got to go with Priest. I mean, I know this is going to sound bad, but I said Priest wasn't that good to sell that leg injury for that long. He was really hurt. He really sold it and completely proved me man. wrong. And Dave LaGreca, I can admit when I'm wrong, so I'm, I was wrong. But fact of the matter is, is there's so much turmoil going on with the Judgment Day. I think if Priest lost the title, it would be too much. See, because you got the whole Liv Morgan thing, uh, her helping out, you know, uh, J.P. McDonough and Finn Balor with the titles, yeah. going after Dirty Dom. By the way, you were talking about Raw getting a little more explicit. Uh -huh. I mean, did you hear uh, Vega when she was talking to Selena yeah. Vega when she did was we talking say that to Liv? There? I'm, I'm not going to say what she said, <laughs> but it was it was it was pretty 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 graphic, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you got all that turmoil going. I think we're going to see mommy come back. Her and uh, Priest are going to fight for leadership, while Liv is also going to be fighting for leadership. I think that is why Priest is going to keep the title. Good point. Uh, joining us live here on the Fatal Four Way is Brian Balf. Brian, it's good to hear from you, brother. Uh, I prefer 
former Stan Lee, and now current nickname, the Caucasian Werewolf. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just got done talking about the Mount Rushmore uh, segment of the of the video games. Do you have any kind of commentary for your selections? Uh, I had the best selections. Uh, I was watching the whole. I was actually. I'm still dry. I was driving to the campground, and I had it streaming on my phone. But I was actually pulling into the site once you guys got to the Mount Rushmore, backing it in. So I missed that little bit there. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I think all of our picks were pretty similar there. Reason, I think uh, they kind of nailed the games there with the Nintendo 64. Obviously, the arcade cabinet was amazing, and I'm sure on that. Uh, I was attacked by a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, werewolf. Uh, <clears throat> no, the, the selections for the, the video games were, you know, a lot of them were universal across the board. It speaks volumes as to the success of the, and the layout of those games. Like, everybody flocked to them. Uh, we also touched on the debut of the Wyatt fam or the Wyatt Six um, here on Monday Night Raw. Uh, what's what's your opinion on that, real quick? Uh, I think it's I think it turned out better than what I even expected. Um, I'm hoping that they uh, pumped the brakes a little bit on the supernatural aspect, so it isn't over the top. Which I kind of feel like that's what they're already doing. I'm. Right now, I am more than a thousand percent happy to be a fan of wrestling. I, I, as you guys know, I'm a huge NXT fan, and I was watching that show consistently and kind of watching the highlights of Raw and SmackDown. But based on the last couple of weeks, I, I I can't wait for Raw and SmackDown to come out, and I'm watching them from start to finish. It's it's been great. It's been a long time coming, and that's something that we have all talked about in various forms of conversation, either me and Sean, you and Q, me and Q, me and you. Um, you know, it is such a great time to be a wrestling fan. We have waited for this for so, so long. And with all these moving parts that are happening between the different pr promotions and this guy's coming, this guy's going down, this, that, and the other thing, who would have thought, Brian, and this just pops in my mind, and I'll ask you, um, who would have thought that the removal of one man from the public image of professional wrestling, in this case Vince McMahon, how much of a ripple effect that would cause across the entire in industry that is pro wrestling? Yeah, I think a big part of that is is Vince all the credit in the world for being an amazing businessman and setting up the rest of WWE. But maybe he should have pumped the brakes on the creativity and allowed more people to have input there. And then it's uh, a lot of like the Viking experience for one. Right. No, I, yeah, there, there's plenty of examples where different characters and different guys and gals would have had a bigger career, a bigger opportunity had Vince been able to see beyond his vision. Like there was a whole other universe out there that has evolved based you know from what used to work. That does not apply in this day and age. Uh, Brian Ball, uh, we appreciate you too. I, we appreciate you calling in here to the show. Is there anything else you want to th throw out there as we uh, we're going into overtime at this point? Joe, I apologize, but uh, we have one big announcement to make. But before we do, is there anything else you, you would like to add? Uh, the last thing I'll touch on is um, I'm sure not only me, but all the fans want to know is uh, when you're going to slap that uh, T-shirt and sell that thing. You broke up there for – can you uh, tell I said, I'm sure, like just like the rest of the fans, we all want to know when you're going to slap that cartoon face of mine on a T-shirt. Oh, well, you never oh, know. You, you'll have to tune in to the uh, PFC store. 
Uh, you can find yeah. the, the information over on our website at www.network.net. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're welcome. I let you plug. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Ball, thank you so much, brother. We look forward to hanging out with you in, in a couple of weeks here on the Fatal 4-Way. All right, you guys have a great holiday, and uh, fans, too. You too, brother. Thanks, thank, too, thank you so, so much. And with that, and I want, once again, we apologize for going over here this week. We have one more big announcement to make, and this was actually an idea that was inspired by our listeners, our viewers, who take time to watch us, t to listen to the show. No matter what you're doing, we appreciate you. And we wanted to show you a way to show our, our appreciation. So with that being said, we have a very special announcement that we are going to close this episode out on. And uh, before we do, we wanted to thank you for tuning in here tonight and have a very ha happy and safe 4th of July holiday. And we will see you in two weeks on the next episode of The Fatal 4-Way. But until then, here is a very special announcement. Until the next time, we'll see you in two weeks here on The Fatal 4-Way. You could spend your summer days at the beach, or taking in a baseball game, or celebrating a holiday. Or you can join the PFC Network and ONTV for the Fatal 4-Way Slammin' Summer Party. Jason, Quidell, Brian, and Sean are taking the show outdoors for their special Summer Slam preview show. Bring a chair or a blanket, have a hot dog, and be a part of the conversation live. It happens Friday, July 26, from the ONTV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan. For more info, visit pfcnetwork.net.